the start today by saying thank you so much to everyone who's checked out the music video for the light. The comments section on that video and the messages I've received in the past week have genuinely blown me away and I'm just so grateful for all the support that people have shown. Um, I just thank you so much for that. So I'm going to take us through the intro to the light today. Um, I'm going to do this in two halves. Um, so I'm filming both these videos today. This is obviously part one. Part two might be a couple of days behind it with the upload just to give me time to edit it and put it all together. Um, the reason I've done it in two videos is just because there's quite a lot going on and I want to kind of take the time to kind of go into detail about some of the techniques I'm using and kind of what I was thinking when I wrote this piece. If anyone wants the tabs to this intro, I've just posted them on Facebook and there's a link to that Facebook post in the description of this video. I know at this point a lot of people will already have tabs. I've actually sent out about 3,000 copies on Instagram so far now. Um, so if I've not got back to your message yet or you're still waiting on tabs, I do apologise. So just bear with me either send me a reminder or if you check out that Facebook post, you can either screenshot them um, or download the image or something like that. So just before we move to close-up camera, I should point out I'm in standard tuning today and I've got a clean tone with just a little bit of delay and reverb pulled up in Cubase. So the idea behind the intro to this song, um, I'm essentially using the chord progression A minor, A minor, F and then G and I'm using an A minor scale along with some other arpeggios to kind of embellish the melody in there. Um, so our first bit sounds like this. Um, so the way I'm playing that, um, it comes from like the A minor kind of bar chord shape we have at fret five. Um, and I'm not gonna use the low E or the A string. Um, I've got my ring finger on seven of the D and then my index finger barred across five on the G, B and E string. So I'm gonna pick the open A, D, G and then B. I'm then gonna, keeping the chord shape on, I'm gonna put my middle finger on six of the B and pull off to five. I'm gonna pick the G and the D. That's. Next bit, I've got this. So it starts off in a very similar way. Um, I'm picking the A, D, G and B. I'm gonna pick six again on my B string and hammer onto eight with my little finger. I'm then gonna pick five on the E and hammer onto seven on the E as well with my ring fingers, that's. Um, next up I get this F chord. The way I'm playing that, sorry my E string's buzzing a little bit, I've changed string this morning and I think it's just, it might need a little bit of adjusting. Um, so I, I usually use tens, I'm, I'm trying nines for a little bit, I'll let you know how I get on with them. Um, I've got my index finger on fret 10 of the, uh, sorry fret 8 of the A string, ring finger and pinky on 10 of the G uh, of the D and G and then index finger barred across 10 on the B and E respectively. So that's my chord shape. I'm essentially going to hold that shape and then I'm going to pick um, the strings. I'm going to use some hybrid picking here. Um, so hybrid picking is essentially where you use the pick on the lower strings and your fingers on the higher strings. Um, or it can sometimes help if you're using kind of lead ideas but in a kind of finger picked context you'd usually have the pick in charge of these and your fingers in charge of the um, G, B and E. So I'm going to play the A and E together. That's with my pick and my ring finger. I'm then going to pick the B and G. I'm going ring finger, middle finger for that. And I'm then going to finish off by going A, E, and then B. That gives us. Next up, I'm going to play my G chord. So this, I've got my middle finger on fret 10 of the A string, ring finger and pinky on fret 10 of the uh, B and E, and then the open G. So again, I'm just going to name the strings as I pick them. I've got um, a and E together first, and then I'm going to play B and G again, and then I'm going to go A uh, and finish on E this time. So all together that is. Now at this point I'm going to slide my little finger up to 12 and then up to 13 on the high E string. Um, so added to what we've just done that gives us. Um, and then I finished this cycle of the chord progression by hitting the open A and fret 12 on the E, and I'm using my ring finger for that. And on my third finger. Um, next up, so now we're into the second cycle of the chord progression, we get a more kind of lead orientated A minor chord. Um, so my open A strings are already ringing out from that that we've just played. Um, and we're gonna get this kind of idea. Um, so the way I'm playing that, I'm hammering on from 12 on the um, E to 13, pull off to 12, pull off to 10. Um, all is kind of like a legato type roll. I'm then gonna pick 13 on the B, back to 10 on the E. Before I do 13, 12 on the B string. And then I'm gonna hammer on from 10 to 12 on the B. Now my, my first 10 on that is held a little bit longer than the 12 and 10. That's. I'm going to do 12 on the G to 10 on the B. I'm 
and then I'm going to play, it's like an alternate pick line now, so it's 12, 10, 9 on the G, and then 12, 10, 9 on the D. And I'm just going down, up, down on the G, up, down, up on the D for that. So all together that gives us... But we want to try and do that with the A string ringing out, so that's... Just to kind of keep the chord tones in that. Um, next up we go to this F chord. Um, so this is kind of like a spread um, F9 shape. So I've got my index finger on for eight of the A string, middle finger on 10 of the uh, D, and pinky on 12 of the G. And I'm gonna pick A, D, A. And my pinky is then gonna slide from 12 to 14 on the G. And then I'll do 12, 10 on the G, 12 on the D. So all together that gives us. Moving on to my G chord now. Um, last chord in this uh, progression again. Um, I'm using the, for anyone who's done the cage system, it's the A shape of my G major. So I've got my ring finger on fret 10 of the A, uh, sorry, index finger on fret 10 of the A, ring finger on the fret 12 of the D, G and B strings barred. Um, and I'm gonna pick A, D, G, D. Oh, sorry, I'm a fret behind. Um, A, D, G, D. Too busy looking at the little screen on the camera. Um, I'm then gonna do like a legato pull off thing to finish this off. So it goes 13, 12, 10 on the B. And then 12, 10, 9 on the G. So that's. And to finish off, we then hit the open A string. Um, so that takes us around the first two kind of cycles of the chord progressions. Um, part two is going to look at the third and fourth cycle, and then we'll kind of look at putting it all together at the end of that lesson. So that was part one of the intro lesson to the light. Like I say, part two will be out a couple of days behind this one. I just need to edit it and put it all together. If you've got any questions about the song or anything else, let me know in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them there. Um, I've had a few questions already about when the song will be on Spotify. Basically what I'm going to do as soon as the full album comes out, which will be late November, early December, I'll have it all available to stream on there. Just so I've not got one song on Spotify whilst this first single's out as it's my first adventure as a solo artist. A few people have also asked when the next single will be out. Um, I'm filming a music video to that next week at the time of filming this, so I'm looking at like an early November-ish release on that one. If you did enjoy the video, please do click like, and if you've not done this already, please do click subscribe. It really helps out um, what I'm doing on YouTube. It helps push the video out. As always, thank you for watching the video. Take care, and I will see you in part two.